guys, welcome back to another video. We're going to start off here with this topic, and, and I'm honestly just absolutely confused at this point with the shift in narratives in the gaming industry. We have this tweet here from Ham Solo. Shout out to Ham Solo. And this is from the Iron Lords podcast. And Colin Moriarty was on there. And I'll be honest right off the bat. I don't listen too much to Colin lately. I haven't. But I don't really don't have a problem with him. I like that he speaks his mind. I like he just kind of says what he wants to say. And it's okay to disagree with him. And that's all well and good. But he talks about exclusives here. And from my understanding, at least... Throughout this generation, I mean, obviously before that, but specifically if we're focusing on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S, exclusives is something that I've been preaching since the beginning of this generation that they don't really matter as much as people think. The industry has completely changed. The only benefit of exclusives at this point in time is for marketing purposes. Like that's what it does. It gets people to think about your brand and think about your platform. And that's huge. But when you look at it from the PlayStation perspective, it's something that we've seen continuously argued as the main reason why PlayStation is better and it's because they have all of those big first party exclusives. And that's something that I don't think really has changed in terms of the narrative. But then we just had the PlayStation Showcase come out and they didn't really show any exclusives besides Spider-Man 2. That was the big one. And 2023 right now is looking like it's going to be a drought for PlayStation in terms of their first party output. And now we're getting a little bit of a narrative change here from Colin as he talks about exclusives. So let's listen to what he says. Who cares if a game's exclusive or not? I don't know why people are so obsessed Ooh, with this. That's there, a were big 30, thing. there were 34 games. There were 34 uh, yeah. games that were like I said. I'm with you on that. But people are like, oh, who cares about Marathon if it's going to yep. be on Xbox? Who cares about Assassin's Creed Mirage? Who cares about Alan Wake 2? Who cares yep. about Dragon's right. Dogma 2? I, I don't. I'm like, I don't really care who makes, I don't understand what this obsession is where the game only matters if it comes from first or second party. And while mm -hmm. I understand people being disappointed, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, Kaga. No, no, I'm gonna finish, finish, finish. Oh, no, no, you good, you good, we good. While I understand people being disappointed in that, Sony, and maybe it's just because I'm in the weeds and we do, mm -hmm. and I do this professionally, and so I just, I have this stuff going through my head all the time. Mm -hmm. They are telling you what they're gonna do, and then they yep. do it. Mm -hmm. And then you're and then like, you this have sucks. people on the internet yeah. telling you the opposite, like it's not gonna happen. I will really, push back though, Colin. I gotta yeah. push back though because the, you gotta understand the it's the you're right to what you're saying as far as no one should care about that. But the fan base has been cultivated to believe we are special here. We are VRP. This is this is PlayStation only on PlayStation. This is part of the market, right? Prior, so that's kind of been faded though. But but so there you have it. You heard. What Colin says here, saying, I mean, in terms of at least of the showcase, who cares if games are exclusive? And honestly, that's my sentiment in general when it comes to the announcement of games. But as Cog said, which I completely agree with, PlayStation has completely been cultivated on exclusivity. That's their entire business. That's where they get people to buy into their platform and go out and purchase a PlayStation. And now we're seeing this narrative change of exclusivity really isn't that big of a deal. And the reason I'm talking about this is because this is something I've been preaching and talking about for years at this point. If you go back, you can see videos all the way back when Xbox announced that they were bringing games day and day to PC. And there was this entire thing that was happening that people were saying that if they do that, they're not going to be able to sell any Xboxes. It's going to kill off the Xbox platform in terms of a console. And it's just a bad business move. And I was out here saying, you guys are going to see that exclusivity, exclusive games aren't the only reason. In fact, they're not even the main reason why people purchase consoles. And we're going to see that consoles are going to still sell very well, even if they release all of their first party games day and date. And that business decision is a far better business decision for the company to grow and to make more money. And we've seen that play out. People can throw out numbers where the console sales have fallen over the last quarter or whatever. It doesn't matter. We have seen the Xbox Series X and S sell very well since it its release and still at the same time releasing their games on PC and PlayStation has seen this and that's why they are moving their model to move away from console exclusivity. They know that going forward, it is a losing model and we're going to see more and more of that occur, especially with releasing games on PS5 and PC and then in the next generation, PS6 and PC. And it's just an interesting point here because I feel like from the PlayStation camp, the entire exclusivity thing has been the, the hill that they always will die on 
until the last PlayStation Showcase just happened where the reality of the situation is all the games that they showed off essentially were multi-platform games or at least coming as well to PC. And I think that's going to be a trend we see going forward even more from the PlayStation side of things. Xbox has kind of created that trend. And Colin is right though. PlayStation has told us what they're going to be doing which is, is why it's just so confusing when you see people pushing back. I mean, we've seen Jim Ryan come out and literally say, we're making games as a service games. And there's no way they're going to be making games as a service games to only land on the PlayStation console. These games are all going to be coming to PC as well. We've seen Bungie literally come out after the acquisition and said, we only agreed to this acquisition if we were able to keep our games multi-platform. And obviously that's going to be happening with Marathon. So the question here is, why are people so upset about the PlayStation Showcase if PlayStation told you this is what they were going to be doing? And the answer to that is because PlayStation has cultivated a culture that relies solely on console exclusives and it is going to be very hard for them to break that culture no matter what anybody says. You're going to see PlayStation get make having disappointing showcases if they don't rely heavily on their first party exclusives going forward so it's a pretty interesting discussion what colin is saying i actually fundamentally agree with him who actually cares if these games are exclusive but when from a playstation perspective it is a major goalpost move from the general narrative and culture that the playstation fans usually have when it comes to talking about games now sticking on games releasing as non console exclusives as we know playstation went out and acquired bungie and when they acquired bungie i thought that was a great move for them because it's really helping them move more into the multiplayer games as a service multi-platform games where they're going to be able to have huge profits off of this and now we have some more information here from herman hulse talking about playstation in pc and it's a pretty positive news for them they're becoming one of the top 20 publishers on pc and this is specifically what herman hulse says. He says pc has grown to become a substantial part of sie's business extending to the reach extending the reach out of our ip beyond the console to a broader audience of players which something we knew is we're going to come from PlayStation and it's going to continue to come. This isn't the end. This is actually the very beginning as they continue to try to expand out their broad reach of gamers across multiple platforms. You're going to see them get further into cloud. Jim Ryan even said that they are going to be going harder on cloud. They just aren't able to talk about it yet. Even with the PlayStation Q that they announced at the showcase, although that's just for remote play, it's getting people into the ecosystem on a different device, on a different piece of hardware. That's something that they will want to continue to expand out. He also says here in fiscal year 22, with the very significant contribution of Bungie's established PC business, we are more than tripled our revenue from PC players and entered the top 20 publishers on a leading PC game store. And that's huge. So they're with Marathon coming out too, we'll see how that does. Obviously, Bungie is going to have a huge role, I think, in a lot of these multiplayer and games as a service games coming out from PlayStation, as we did see that news about them looking at the Last of Us multiplayer game and pretty much just saying it wasn't good enough. And then we saw Naughty Dog come out and say that they're essentially delaying the game internally and still having to work on it. Now, I know there was no official release date, but I feel like if Bungie didn't look at the Naughty Dog multiplayer game, the Last of Us multiplayer game, the game will be coming out sooner. Maybe they would have shown it off at the PlayStation Showcase. So this entire expansion here from PlayStation where it's going to become more of a multi-platform developer with their IPs and with their titles, I think is something that is just starting here. And, and that's why, I mean, when it comes to the entire exclusivity talk, it you don't lose as a gamer if people on other platforms get to play games, exclusivity really is just good for marketing and for the corporation itself. But as a gamer, it doesn't affect you. No matter how you think it does, it really, really does not. And finally, let's end off today's video with this. Clobro put out a summary of the last four showcases from Xbox and their first party content. And you look at these numbers, and no matter what anybody says, at least from specifically narrowly that showcase perspective whether these games have come out or not xbox has done a very good job at delivering lots of first party content for people to get excited about and to get hyped up about after watching the show so we look here 2019 there were 14 first party games including games as a service 2020 11 first party games including games as a service ignoring series x and s updates 2021 14 first party games 2022 13 first party games 2023 is a question mark, but I would assume 
we're going to be getting around the same amount of first party content within that showcase, which would just absolutely destroy the first party content that PlayStation showed off. And when we talk about first party content, we can go back to the whole discussion of exclusivity. Xbox has already made it clear for years now that they're not locking games to their console, but first party content is still very important. No matter where people are playing these games, it is still a major part of getting people into the ecosystem. So showing off a large number of first party content is going to be important, especially this year for Xbox, even though we know Forza Motorsports coming out and Starfield is coming out, getting people excited for what's beyond that is going to be a huge major part of this show. And I think Xbox has to really kind of balance what they want to do here with all the first party stuff they're going to show off they've mixed it up the last two years they they did a show in 2021 where it was really about the future and a lot of the stuff that they showed off is not near to coming out and then 2022 they did the 12 month thing here where they didn't deliver a lot on that 12 month thing but they showed a lot of gameplay and it got people thinking that there was a lot more closer games to that are going to be coming out in a sooner time that's obviously not the case. I think this year, they got to bring the first party content, show a lot of it, but be far more careful of setting people's expectations as to when they can expect to play these games. Like I think if they have about 12 first party games or whatever that they do show off, a handful of those need to be games that are coming out in the next year. I, I truly believe that they got to show off gameplay for a lot of this type of stuff. And it can't just be CGI trailers. You just have to balance it so people can be satisfied with a mixture of both. And maybe that's what they're going to go with here in 2023 because you have people complaining about 2021 and games too far. You have people complaining about 2022 and not liking the 12 month uh, window even before they knew that Xbox was going to miss a lot of those games with a 12 month window. I think for 2023, you just go in there, you balance it out. You show off a lot of gameplay of games that are seemingly ready to come out. I mean, if they have those and you have to think about the amount of studios they have, there's probably going to be some games there that we haven't seen yet that are probably closer to coming out than we think. And they may have gameplay for that. So there is stuff to be excited about here. And as I said in my video yesterday, I'm excited for this show. Like, I think this is going to be a great show, but definitely I'm not going into this thinking it's going to be something that is the greatest show of all time. And I'm not going to go in there setting myself up for disappointment. But I think Xbox, like I said multiple times over the last couple of days, they have a massive opportunity here to take 2023 by the horns and be ahead of PlayStation in terms of getting people excited for the platform as we go through the rest of this year. And then obviously with Starfield, that's going to be a major push for Xbox. But I'm going to leave the video there, guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up if you're new or hit that subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.